Good afternoon and welcome back to A Taste for Truth. Now, I'm sure all you fact finders are just furious to have a run through of a recap. So let's do that immediately, shall we? We know that Julian Assange, the husband and father, is also an award-winning journalist who has set up WikiLeaks, which is a whistleblowing facility, which blew the whistle on American war crimes, resulting in Julian falling foul of the American administration and beginning his journey to Belmarsh, where he remains. Subsequent to the WikiLeaks release of the collateral murder video, the Americans were very, very, very upset. But somehow this resulted in the Swedish authorities accusing him of sexual misconduct. Julian then took refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for fear that the Swedish would send him to America. He's granted asylum and citizenship by the Ecuadorian authorities. I think this rape business requires a little more digging, don't you? The BBC have come up with a rather handy little timeline, even though they've been ignoring Julian's plight for the most part. So let's have a look at that, shall we? Julian Assange, a timeline of the WikiLeaks founders case. 2010, the Swedish prosecutor's office first issued an arrest. He is then bailed and put under house arrest. Now, the thing I don't understand is it would be fantastic if states pursued rape allegations with such gusto all the time. However, no one I know who's reported a rape has had the alleged rapist put under house arrest at all for any period of time. And for the most part, said alleged rapists don't even end up in court. So why is it that Julian is being treated differently from all the other people who get accused of rape? Perhaps he's not wrong. Perhaps he's right. And the Swedish authorities will extradite him to the USA. This is entirely possible. And then the UK Supreme Court rules that he should be extradited to Sweden to face questioning over the allegations. So, Julian takes refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy. During the meantime, the Swedish exercised a slow motion prelim preliminary investigation to his allegations of sexual misconduct. And they don't ever actually press charges. In fact, in the end, they drop the charges. So Julian remains in the embassy in our story. We of course know that he has since moved on to Belmarsh. But for now, we're going to leave Julian in the embassy waiting to find out what happens with these allegations against him while he seeks asylum and well what does he do while in the embassy we'll find out all about that next week but before i leave you i'm just going to give you a few little tasks join Julian's friends at Belmarsh every Saturday afternoon at two o'clock, 
holding a vigil. And apparently, Julian's spirits are lifted because he can hear them outside while he is in solitary. And I'm sure that makes him feel much better. Also, you can join them at Piccadilly at four o'clock on a Saturday, where, as you can see, they're stating Julian's case very clearly. I hope that you add these things to your list of things to do and don't forget there's a protest on Tuesday. I'll remind you about that again tomorrow. And in the meantime, get a taste for truth. Chew things over, fact find to fan the fires of your freedom. Have a lovely day.